All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Lee Carraher, who is over in Wisconsin. How are you doing, Lee? I'm well, John. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And Lee is the president and CEO at Double Forte and the founder, indeed, a successful national public relations, content marketing and social media firm. And what we're going to talk about today is getting on the map, how to break through to your potential customers and clients. All right, Lee, let's dive straight into it. It's very, very noisy out there today, right? It's very, very noisy. There's so much stuff like piling in on us all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you how do you break through the noise? I think the lots well, there's lots of ways to do it. Um, and the most efficient way to do it is to be focused, right? Mm -hmm. um, in our world, in PR and social media, you can be busy all the time and get nowhere, right? right. Um, and you just don't want to do activity for activity's sake. Oh, I want to be in social media. Oh, I want to do a blog post. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, no. You really need to be focused on who are you trying to reach? What do they think is important so that they would value you? And then what are the ways to make those that thing happen that will then reach your and impress your potential customer? Um, and you can the more niche you do it, the easier it is. So I always say, one, what's the goal? Two, mm -hmm. what's the focus? Three, let's start small. Right. Let's start small. Because if you try to boil the ocean or even, you know, if you have a thousand targets, start with 10. Just start with 10. Because uh, reaching 10 is um, as hard as reaching a thousand. And once you crack 10, you can get to a thousand. Yeah, because it's really interesting, is it? Because I mean, I mean, once upon a time, you know, people would have maybe sat back a bit and gone, okay, let's work out the who and all of this stuff. But today, because it's so easy to access these platforms, they get kind of carried away and say, okay, let's just hit everything. So mm -hmm. when you when you pull people back and, and focus, mm -hmm. because I often think that not enough effort is really put in on really understanding the who. Yeah. I think so too. And I think the, we have a client um, who we are working with today and the goal of the client is to get acquired um, in a very specific space that our, everybody already knows this company mm -hmm. and everybody who in the space, it's a pretty narrow space and they won't acquire this company. Someone outside the space who's gonna, will acquire the company. So it's very clear that inside baseball, it's not gonna help. We need to get outside of baseball. So who are the likely candidates outside of baseball? You know, are they, you know, are they rugby players? Are they cricket players? Let's focus on cricket because it's relatively close. So it's got a bat and a ball, right? <laughs> so once you, um, so really getting like very specific about what is the goal and who is most likely lets you be as narrow as possible. Um, because if you just, uh, I mean, this company had a website that was basically everything. They were you know, slicing and dicing and selling Julian fries, as far as I could tell. And it was valuable to nobody because mm -hmm. it was trying to please everybody. But you're much more valuable if you focus on what will be valuable to the person who is either trying to acquire you or who you're trying to work with than it is if you're trying to please everybody. Um, and then you can um, build on it over time. But if you just try to make everybody happy, you'll make yourself very unhappy yeah because obviously i mean the temptation is always there to go broad but obviously if you go broad then you have the second issue that comes into play is number one uh, as we said the who you're going you're going really broad but then the what 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 value are you bringing suddenly now yeah. you have to figure out trying to have a generic message to meet a whole broad audience and basically you you uh, satisfy nobody you dilute everything by being as broad you know, the possibility of being broad or jet, you know, double four days of we, you know, we are a uh, double four, you know, we're a firm, we do mm -hmm. public relations, social media content, and we do it for very specific um, categories. But we could do other things, but we can't chase everything. You cannot chase everything. You need to chase the things that are the best for you and where, who you can serve the best. Um, and once you've done that self-identification process for yourself, that lets you say who's in, who's out. And when you do the who's in, who's out exercise, then you can say, okay, who's, you know, so John, 
what are you going to care about? Well, John's a hmm. p- podcaster. Who is in his ecosystem? I can figure that out actually now, you know? So who am I going to get around John's ecosystem right. who's, who might be important to John? So, but if John's not my guy, you know, if I don't want, if I don't care about John knowing about me, then why do I care about all these other things that I've decided that are important for John? You know, those things are so important in terms of getting on the map for um, anybody or any company. Um, yeah, no, absolutely, and and I think the uh, and I think the the more obviously the more granular you can go, the more focused, the more you can corral everybody, and you can get the company working together in a cohesive way to go after go after the target. And I guess the other part of the choice, though, isn't it funny how people get so. Uh, we're, we love adding things. We hate subtracting things. So true. Right? We just hate that. We, uh, I mean, I always love this. In the past, I know from doing strategic planning sessions, you, know, you go, okay, what are we going to do this year? And everybody's got cool ideas and you're writing them up on the whiteboards or everything. And then you say, okay, what are we going to stop doing? And suddenly everybody's looking down and <laughs> silent. <laughs> My uh, friend Nilla from Merchant calls it murder boarding. So you take the board and like, what are you going to take off of it? What are you going to kill? What are you going to kill on that board? Because you cannot do everything. And I always focus is your friend. Focus is your best damn friend. And if you just, you know, if you spend time with your best friends, then uh, you can get somewhere. But if you you try to make, give everybody like a drop of champagne, no one's satisfied. Yeah, no, I I love that. That's a great analogy. Yeah. Um, especially to Irish people, yeah. Who, who want, uh, <laughs> might be Irish. Yeah. If, I yeah, might be yeah, of exactly. Irish descent, maybe, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, Mac yeah, and exa- her. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, in Ireland, you wouldn't want to be sharing out the alcohol among everybody and only everybody only getting a tiny bit. Yeah, you're better off losing fifty percent of the friends up front. So true. <laughs> better have a and small have, party. <laughs> exactly, and having a bunch of better friends at the end. You see, it all works exactly. out. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but I love I love that idea about focus because I do think like uh, you know focus is so critical and you're right it is your it is your best friend and it allows you to 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 build everything around it's just it's just again it's something that 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 people really really struggle with and then it's not even when you just when you pick an area of focus but as you said I mean you still have to make sure that you're again focusing in on the exact point of where you bring the value right. and the exact person who should be your audience. Well, you know, we have a lot of clients who go, I want to be on TikTok. And we're like, why? Yeah. None <laughs> of your, you know, your, your, your clients' kids are on TikTok. Do you think mm-hmm. they will actually, you know, you're not going to go on TikTok or we should be on Pinterest. And we're like, you know, Pinterest is, you know, very effective. And it's often our first choice for some clients, but and in professional services business, probably not, you know, so like just because it exists doesn't mean you have to do it um, yeah. better to do things that. So, for instance, in media relations, if you want to be quoted in the media, then you must yeah. be on Twitter, period. There's not a choice. Mm-hmm. You must be on Twitter because Twitter is where all reporters go first. They don't go to Google first. They go to Twitter first to see who is a credible source. So if you want to be quoted in the media, go on Twitter. Um, and people are like, well, gosh, it's so, you know, you got to be on a 24 seven. Like, no, you don't. You don't have right. to be on 24 seven. There's ways to use Twitter to your advantage if that's your goal. And if you want to get on the map and you want people to see you and being quoted by the media is important to you. And I would say that's the, it's a huge value in terms of third party endorsement. Yep. Then Twitter is a must and maybe deprioritize TikTok. <laughs> If you are an influencer and you're selling lipstick, well, then TikTok's the place to be. Yeah. So it just depends on, you know, what are you trying to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, my my son did inform me a while back. He just said, Dad, because uh, I was asking about TikTok one time and he said, Dad, you have no business being on TikTok. <laughs> So I wouldn't even I wouldn't even bother. He said, it's not for you. You wouldn't understand it anyway. And it's just not for you. So don't bother. <laughs> well, so it's I good t- that your son is being so truthful with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although I sort of wonder what he's doing on TikTok now, but OK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's too true. But yeah, it is. It is amazing. But and that, I, I love the Twitter example that you use, though, media relations, because that's such a that's such a powerful one, because let's face it, like your most companies, we all love to be quoted regularly in the media i mean it's it's considered one of obviously as you know it's considered one of your best uh, best pr things you can get but again it's not going to you're not going to go on twitter a couple of times and miraculously you're going to get media coverage no 
absolutely not. So, you know, what is your area of ex expertise? What are you going to be? What's your original content? What's your retweeting content? What's the whole strategy around it? Who are you following? You should be following all the reporters you like. You should be following all the reporters who cover your industry or cover your topic. You should be engaging with them, retweeting them, all this kind of stuff, right? So you have to have a strategy for Twitter. It's not just like, oh, just throw a lot of crap up there, and tweet, 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 tweet. Um, and frequency, you know, there are very few people on Twitter who can't who, who can have the impact that that uh, people want on Twitter without being frequent, doing it a lot and doing it, you know, daily, multiple times daily kind of stuff, right? Um, and then things that are scheduled and things that are extemporaneous. So mm -hmm. you basically it's planning, right? <laughs> it's planning. Yeah. Here's my here's my three areas of expertise that I should be quoted about in the media that will help me establish my business. Here's the three things I should talk about. You know, just choose three, choose two, choose one. I don't care. Just choose. And then um, all the different things you can say about that, right? You can say a million things about the things you're expert in. Number one. Number two is who else is in the universe of the people who you would compete with, who would, who would people would find instead of you? Follow all those people. And then um, in terms of the media and other influencers who are uh, have influence on this, right? It's follow all those people. Mm -hmm. So then your published plan is what is my published plan? So for instance, we say, you know, blogging is still so important. If you can have a podcast, it's awesome because it's such a content generator, but it's a lot of work. But if you can have, a, you know, you're blogging once a month or once a week, and then that thing turns into 15 tweets over two weeks, and then you schedule 20 minutes a day just to just use hashing, hashtags and then going on there and doing stuff, you can get a lot done with very little time um, as long as you plan it ahead of time on Twitter. Yeah, and, and I, think, I think that's a great point, though, because we're used to planning in so many areas, but when it comes to some stuff like social media and that, you know, that tends to go out the window. People think it's mm -hmm. just a free for all or just, you know, Alice, mm -hmm. as long as I throw something on there, that's all that matters. So, I mean, that point about it's just the same as everything else. It needs, it mm -hmm. needs planning and it needs, a, it, it needs a strategy. Let me ask you this, Lee, are there any, are there any uh, areas of, of, of PR or marketing that you see that it's kind of been overlooked or maybe old style stuff that the baby's been thrown out of the bathwater. Are there other areas that people should consider being in that maybe they're, maybe they're not, they're getting distracted into shiny new toys when they should mm -hmm. be focusing on things that are maybe are more traditional, maybe a little bit more laborious, maybe a little bit more boring. The answer is yes. <laughs> um, and you know, what, what's old again is new again, um, kind of thing. Right. And our, our business has changed. So I started my company before Twitter. So, right. you know, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, we've seen so many changes, but to, in today's world, right today, 2021, I would say, you know, using the press release is actually the, probably the most valuable thing you should, can do if it's well-written, um, because, uh, report there aren't as many, our freelance list has over tripled since the last the beginning of the oh. pandemic because so many people lost their jobs so the more you can write uh, the story that actually would be get published not the story that you'd want from your ad copy but the story that would actually get published and put it into press release form the better chance you have of act actually getting that picked up using wire services allows you to be found um, and people we, for five years we didn't do any wire services now we actually right. pay for wire services because it, it ensures distribution and it allows the so much better SEO. And then blogging, if you're like, oh, don't blog, just do short form. Long form blogging. So long form, I mean, 600 words to a thousand words. Right. So mm -hmm. I know that's not very long form, but you know, in this day, in this day and age, that's, hello? that's yeah, in this day and age, war that's and peace. Yeah, I was going to say that's war and peace. That's today's war and peace. Yeah. But if, you know, you know, if you're expert in something, you should be able to do 600 words to a thousand exactly. words pretty easily mm -hmm. uh, on a weekly basis. So just that steadiness of uh, being it, creating a referenceable body of work is the most important thing you can possibly do. So um, and then amplifying it. So if you can do the press release at moments of time that makes sense, if you can't, you know, one thing that's totally overlooked today, we're doing a lot of these right now is bylines. So doing mm -hmm. op-eds. Right. So the New York Times doesn't do op eds anymore because the definition of op ed is the opposite of the editorial page. And where is the editorial page on um, 
in a in an online newspaper. Mm -hmm. But the structure of an op-ed where you are putting forth an opinion that is timely and re relevant and local um, on critical topics will just move your business so far. Oh my gosh, it will move your business so far if you can be relevant, timely, and not sell yourself, right? Um, so those are the things that used to be staples. Like when I started my career doing the op-ed and then they sort of went by the wayside. And I would say for women too, and people of color, the, um, <clears throat> the op-ed and the byline are even more important because 90% um, of bylines and op-eds are written by men. So they're looking for women and people of color to um, pen those. And then on the long form, uh, also with podcasts, as we know, podcasts and blogs are 85% yeah. with men. So just having the other voice, uh, white men, uh, the other voice um, actually does you know people are looking for the other voice reporters looking for the other voice companies are looking for the other voice so the more you can uh, um, take advantage of being a different voice a uh, different looking voice the more advantageous it will be you know there are many many companies right now who want to make sure that when they're doing an rfp that 50 percent of those rfps are women-led companies or bipoc owned companies or whatever it is well if you're one of those people start talking Let's go. Yeah. Take advantage. Take advantage. <laughs> you're leaving of this, money yeah. on the table if you're not taking advantage of the fact of who you are. Yeah, but I love that. I love that uh, the things you've gone through there because I think it's a great reminder and a great lesson. Because let's face it, as you said, um, pre-pandemic and uh, in the last couple of years, people were all like, oh, "Press releases, waste of time. Mm -hmm. You know, wire service, a waste of time." But and there's probably a ton of people who still believe that because they mm -hmm. haven't like observed or they haven't uh, worked with somebody like you who's saying, "No, actually, mm -hmm. it is coming back into vogue for these mm -hmm. for these very very good reasons." So it's it it is really fascinating that you can get you can get trapped in assumptions very quickly. Very quickly. And I think that what you said earlier about the shiny object, um, you know, and depending on where you are in the country. So, you know, my company's headquartered in San Francisco, Silicon Valley, and, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, buzz, 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 hot, hot, hot. The Silicon Valley is not the world. <laughs> Silicon mm -hmm. Valley is not the country. And we try to make sure we're getting, you know, the rest of the country's point of view, too, when every, any time we're doing anything for a California company, because um, it doesn't all work that way. And, you know, when we, when we talked before about like, who are you trying to reach? Well, who you're trying to reach has a lot to say with what tactics and what strategies you use, but you should, I mean, never discard anything from the past. It's all a tool that you might want to use depending on what you're trying to get done. Um, and just because it's not shiny and new and uh, doesn't mean it's not super valuable depending <laughs> on what you're trying to do. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And I think, uh, and just uh, to say that when I came, when I moved over from Ireland to the States 25 years ago, I did move to Silicon Valley. I moved to mm -hmm. during the dot com. And that yeah. was, and that was an early lesson for me to learn was that Silicon Valley was not the, you know, and especially the dot com era, it was yeah. like a completely <laughs> crazy place that was unrelated yeah. to anywhere else in the world, let alone in, uh, let alone in the US. <laughs> So but, yeah, but yeah, but not to, but that's a great thing is not again, not to, not to folk or not to get caught up in, in, in one particular area or, or group of people or whatever, but to make sure mm -hmm. that you're all, that you're hitting the right audience with the right message. Um, but these are great, great tips, I think, here on, you know, uh, press releases, bylines, blog posts, op-eds. I mean, those are great ways for people to mm -hmm. to get. They just take a little bit. They just take that little bit of extra work, right? They do. They're not. You can't just unless you are just the most expert of expert and expert of writers and thinkers and you don't need anybody help, anybody's help. Um, they just, you know. You know, we always say do less of good than more of crap. Uh, so because, again, just because you're busy doesn't mean you're effective. And um, often sometimes we don't win the account because we don't have something really shiny and pretty and there's po no ponies dancing around and no unicorns. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, Lee, where's the party? Where's this? Where's that? I'm like, well, you could have it. I wouldn't use your money that way. But if you want to, we could add it to this program. But we're not going to sub, you know, we're not going to, you know, prioritize the party over all the stuff we know is going to work because we've been around the block a few times right mm -hmm. <laughs> so um 
it, you know, you want to focus on, again, and also small and small spaces, right? So things take time. Things take a lot of time. And I think the biggest uh, challenge when you have big goals, fast goals, is making sure that you start small so that you can build momentum. Uh, and the things that you need to talk to 10 people are the same things you need to talk to 1,000 people. But if you try to talk to 1,000 people before you've gotten 10 people under your belt, you're just going to be wasting your time and wasting your money. Yeah. And I think the other thing, uh, Lee, and I think this is true of, of most things, but I, I do think it's uh, you know PR marketing as well, is that it's always going to take probably a little longer than you would like always. For, the, for, always. The, for the impact and the results. And let's face it, we don't live in a very patient world today. No, not at all. And people think, oh, that person was an overnight success. No, they weren't. 13 <laughs> years, 13 years they were doing it, right? Yeah. Or whatever, because we can find those things. It's easy to find things out, right? Um, yeah. and so for instance, on our public relations, people who want media relations, people who want to be in the media in their categories or in general consumer or radio or television, um, the shortest contract we take is six months because it takes five, minimum five, because they don't have to write right now. The thing about what we do is we're negotiating, we're in influencing, we're um, trying to do something that you're not paying for that space. So if mm -hmm. you want immediate impact with less, if you want immediate result with less impact, well, you should do advertising. Yeah. And I probably just pissed off all your advertisers, but. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I think less. it's. Uh... Yeah. If you want immediate results, meaning you can see it, you can see what you're, you know, what you paid for. If you want immediate result, use advertising, but don't expect the return unless you have a huge budget. I mean, millions of dollars of budget. Mm -hmm. If you want, you know, things that are going to build over time, build foundation, build reputation. Reputation is not built on advertising. Reputation is built on third party um, awareness and third party endorsement. And that is what we do. And it takes minimum minimum five months to get moving yeah no because they don't have to write right now unless you are you know if you're unless you're moving markets and most companies don't move markets unless you're impacting global strategy and most companies and most people don't do that there's just a handful of people who can impact global strategy unless you're those people you have to earn it over time yeah, no, absolutely. This is fantastic advice, Lee. And I'm going to, well, I, must, I, I want to get that quote right because that was really good. Less of good. Was it less of good? Less of good is better than more of crap. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I, you, you got the key thing out of the conversation, John. <laughs> I love it. Listen, Lee, thanks very much. All of Lee's information uh, will be below the video and all the links and all that good stuff. But before we go, Lee, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company. I'm a company, Double Forte. Uh, it's 19 years old. I can't even imagine. And we're headquartered wow. in San Francisco, but we have people all over right now. Post you know, COVID, we have people all over the country. Uh, we work with uh, consumer lifestyle, uh, professional services, and consumer technology firms in all things communication. We help, basically, we solve business problems with communication. Fantastic. Listen, thanks again, Lee, and thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.